Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Ilya Ponomarev. He is a former Russian lawmaker who has been living in Ukraine since 2016. He was the only member of the Russian Duma to vote against the annexation of Crimea back in 2014. And since the beginning of the war in Ukraine on February the 24th, he has joined the Territorial Defense Forces. He joins us from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. Thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Mr. Ponomarev, uh, I want to begin with uh, the gruesome uh, discovery uh, that took place in towns and villages near uh, Kiev, especially uh, Bucha, but it also uh, seems uh, to be the case in Borodyanka. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of emotion here in the West and uh, beyond, uh, but do you fear that the worst might still be ahead when it comes to those discoveries? I, uh, you know, I cannot compare one to another, but I think that uh, the discoveries would definitely be not the last, uh, because the uh, whole uh, logic of this uh, war, uh, Russian forces, they are facing the situation when every single house, uh, every single person, uh, all Ukrainians, they resist, and many of them resist with their arms. So obviously uh, they are in the situation of totally besieged, uh, frightened, uh, scared people who uh, are retaliating on the civilians. And uh, uh, we will see more, unfortunately. I am 100 percent sure of this. Right. Uh, from what you're saying, uh, do you think that it's more uh, random crimes due to panic, fear, or, as the Ukrainian authorities have said, or the U.S. and Europe have said, this is a deliberate policy and those are war crimes? And these are war crimes. These are atrocities uh, which uh, have no excuse, that's for sure. The question uh, is that some people suggest that uh, they were foreplanned. No, I don't believe that they were foreplanned. I think that what was foreplanned uh, was... Uh, um, uh, creation of certain hunt lists, uh, and uh, I am on, uh, on on the main one, I know, uh, because being uh, vocal and visible here in uh, Ukraine, I think that they wanted to oppress uh, militarily with brute force uh, people um, of nationalist beliefs, uh, uh, Ukrainian patriots, because they wanted to scare the general population, they, they wanted to... Uh, um, uh, make them uh, loyal by by doing so, uh, but right now they're just uh, fighting uh, with every single person because they they face the omnipotent resistance from everyone. Right. I mean, uh, the fact that uh, so many of uh, those uh, apparent uh, crimes are uh, left uh, there for everyone uh, to see. Obviously, Moscow said that this is fake news, that this is staged by the West and by Ukraine. Uh, but uh, for you, is, is it an illustration of uh, maybe uh, the panic? Uh, because one could have imagined that if it was carefully planned, uh, all those evidences uh, would have been erased or hidden. No, uh, you, you're absolutely right. It, it is panic because they were running away. Moscow suggests that uh, it was a poor planned and organized retreat, that it was uh, a gesture of their goodwill, if you want, uh, that they just said, OK, we, we made everything uh, that we wanted. We accomplished our mission and we just go away. But that was not the case. I was witnessing it with my own eyes. It was a retreat. It was uh, it was panic. Uh, it was uh, running away uh, from uh, Ukrainian forces, so they just didn't have enough time uh, uh, to cover the traces. And uh, I think that actually one of the reasons of what we see uh, on the streets of uh, Bucha and other other places is that they captured certain people whom they thought were the resistance fighters, and they didn't have enough time, uh, so they just executed all of them uh, when retreating. Right. Uh, what is uh, Vladimir Putin's intent now? Clearly, uh, if he wanted uh, to seize Kiev, he has failed. And in a way, he's acknowledged that there's a lot of concern that the troops, the Russian troops, will now focus on the Donbass, on the south of the country. Uh, is a de facto partition of Ukraine Vladimir Putin's new goal now? I think you, you may be right. Uh, Obviously, we don't know it for sure, but there is this old concept of so-called Novorossiya, 
uh, like New Russia, uh, that's uh, an, an old term uh, for the uh, eastern and southern uh, parts of uh, Ukraine, uh, which consists of arc uh, between Kharkiv and Odessa. Uh, including and then include Donbass, obviously. I think they would try to create this arc and claim that that was their objective uh, from the day one. So I think that what we see uh, in the near future is we would see more attacks on Kharkiv. We would most likely see attacks on Dnipro. We most likely would see attempts uh, to capture uh, Mykolaiv and Odessa. But uh, I, I, I don't think that uh, that's theoretically feasible uh, for Russian military. Don't you think that Vladimir Putin will want some kind of victory, especially uh, there's a date uh, coming up uh, next month, May 9th, the end of World War II, and that he could do it at all costs and even at a cost worse than uh, the one paid by uh, those people in Bucha and Bordyanka? No, I think he will try to claim something by May, May 9th. I think that's uh, an immediate objective and i think that's the promise that has been delivered to vladimir putin by his generals but uh frankly speaking you know judging on how the first month of war uh went i i don't see whether he can uh, he can do something about it now a lot of uh, uh ukrainian military uh, would be unfrozen uh from kiev and they can uh, join fighters in eastern ukraine so just simply uh, Russian military is not enough and, uh, and they show that they are incompetent uh, to achieve their military objectives. So Putin lost the war? Putin definitely lost the war and he would be gone soon. Uh, well, let's turn now to Russia. According to uh, the most recent polls, the war, or as it's called in Russia, the special military operation in Russia, has made Vladimir Putin extremely uh, popular at home. And uh, the protests uh, that we saw a little bit in the beginning in Russia against the war have essentially uh, vanished. So how could you say that he will be gone soon if he's supported uh, that much at home? Well, firstly, I don't think that your statement about Vladimir Putin's popularity is accurate. Uh, if we look at the polls, uh, we see that it's, uh, and that's uh, even uh, speaking about the official polls, that uh, the uh, support for so-called special operation is at 80%. Uh, then support for Vladimir Putin is at 44-45%. Uh, but when uh, people are asked uh, not his uh, attitude towards Vladimir Putin, but in general, how they see different Russian politicians, uh, uh, Vladimir Putin is being named by 25-26%. So, and I think that uh, uh, that's uh, actually his uh, real uh, approval uh, rate, not uh, this uh, 80%. And speaking about 80%, it's just dangerous to say, to say otherwise. Uh, when uh, people are talking to pollsters, they know that pollsters have their phone number, they know where they live, um, so they reply how they've been told to reply by uh, the state uh, television, you know, they're living in an authoritarian, autocratic state. Right. Uh, you said that uh, you believe uh, Putin's day in powers are counted. Uh, how do you see the scenario unfolding? Because obviously, uh, for what we see, he seems to be holding uh, the reins very firmly until now. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. And uh, when I am saying so, I am saying because uh, there is a historical logic. No dictator who has lost the war can stay in power. Uh, that's simply impossible. Uh, so he would be he would be replaced. It can be uh, happening uh, via several different methods. Uh, one, uh, obviously, it's a popular rebellion. And I think that the demand for it is growing and the more uh, economic problems uh, uh, would be imposed on ordinary Russians, uh, the more there would be a demand for a political force that would lead the people uh, uh, to change the power in the country. Uh, secondly, obviously, the elites are very much unhappy because they are suffering. Uh, it's them who are living in France, in southern France, uh, uh, on Côte d'Azur, right? So uh, uh, they are very much unhappy that their villas are being frozen, that their accounts uh, are being seized, and uh, they want to do something about it. But it's again, it's a question of political alternative. 
So uh, we as uh, Russian opposition, we need to create this alternative. Right. Uh, just very last question. Uh, there's a, a third possibility is that uh, there would be uh, some kind of coup within uh, his inner circle, the security uh, people that he has surrounded himself with. Obviously, people tend to think that they're very faithful to him. But uh, there is always this possibility. Do you rule it out or do you think that this is, might be uh, the end scenario for him? No, when I was speaking about elites, uh, uh, I had in mind something like this coup. I just do not believe that this coup would be originated by so-called Siloviki, by the security forces. I think that uh, it would be very much inspired by oligarchs' money. But obviously, uh, it has to be implemented by people with guns who have access to his physical body. Right. And this is what you're hoping for Russia? That's... Uh, that's one of stakes, you know. No, I would rather prefer the revolution because I think that the system needs to be replaced. I'm afraid that if it would be a coup, that uh, the system would be preserved. But I think that even if it would be preserved at the first time, uh, it would not stay for, for, for long. You know, when in Russia political processes are unveiling, uh, it's very hard to stop them. Ilya Panoramarev, I want to thank you very much uh, for being with us uh, from uh, Kiev in Ukraine. And thank you for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24.